When one often hears about corporations in Singapore, most often than not you would probably think that they are extremely clean, perfectly managed, and efficient. Singapore after all is one of the most competitive nations ever, which should imply that business is regulated properly and any form of corruption is mitigated. However, there's just one problem. No country is perfect in governing its corporations. There will always be a unique entity that would emerge illicitly. Furthermore, some criteria do not fall under the concept of competitive. A corporation could be well managed, growing every year, and contributing to the overall economy. But the bottom line is its operations are harming people. Hence why a certain corporation in Singapore still exists to this very day, which is regarded as the world's dirtiest business ever, is often criticized for its unethical behaviors. And it is a company you may have probably never heard of, a company known as Wilmar International, one of the world's largest agribusinesses ever, the world's largest palm oil producer, and currently ranks 211th in the Forbes Global 500 list in 2020. It was even named by Forbes in 2019 as the third most admired company for food production which simply means that the company is setting standards for many out there. As of the time of this writing, the company is currently valued in the range of $20 billion on the Singapore Stock Exchange, but it was at one point valued at more than $30 billion. Furthermore, the company itself is so massive that it reports more than $65 billion in annual sales, which is attributed to its food production operations. This means that Wilmar International, as one of the leading agribusinesses of the world, is more embedded all around than you think. They are present in 50 countries, with over 50 manufacturing plants and employing over 100,000 people. Cultivating palm oil to edible oil refining, to even biodiesel and so much more. But as the company continues to outshine its competitors, implementing its name right there in the leagues of Singapore's biggest businesses, and people globally consume their products every day, beneath all of these are child labor, forced labor, unsafe and mistreatment of workers, and at the same time operating in environmentally degrading practices, which have forced displacement of the poor population and so much more. How do we know this? It is because Wilmar International, through its unethical behavior, is not new. No, in fact, it has been happening for years. And despite years in business and issues raised consistently, they still continue to operate, making billions of dollars in profit without regard to proper ethics surrounding their operations. To understand how Wilmar International got to where it is, let us first take a look at how and when the company started. Wilmar International dates its way back to 1966, when the Kuok Group started to venture off to other industries, which they did by starting the Federal Flour Mills in Malaysia. This was just one of their ventures on top of many more out there, as the Kuok Group is famous for companies such as Shangri-La Hotel and Resorts Carry Properties, and so much more. Now back to Federal Flour Mills. The company initially was producing and cultivating soybean crushing plants and edible oils. Through years of operations and success, the Kuok Group eventually set their sights on more opportunities in the agribusiness space and set up a similar company known as the Wilmar Group. It was a business in partnership with Chinese-Indonesian businessman Martua Satoris that started in 1991. Initially, their products were in the palm oil plantations, strategically in Indonesia. Following the success, they had grown their palm oil business from one plant to another and it took only a few years before they had gone on to partner with major conglomerates from China and India to set up manufacturing plants in their own home country. In China, they partnered with a state-owned food processing business known as Kofco, and in India, they signed with the Adani Group. They, however, did not stop in Asia. They went on to venture into Africa, a land that they will soon ravage, which some have cited due to greed. In Africa, they would go into operations and buy out some plantations in parts of South Africa to Kenya and Tanzania. Then after that, they even went to Europe and entered a joint venture with a Ukraine company. By 2006, the company would finally be listed on the Singaporean Public Stock Exchange and be valued at more than 2 billion Singaporean dollars. From here on out, they would go on a winning streak, buying out competitors, buying out every single plantation they see, and reaping all the benefits within their eyes. They would eventually become a leader in Asia, and when we mean that they are a leader, we mean that their products reach probably billions of people every single year. Now, the most crucial part of the video is its controversial business operations. You see, the company even takes pride in ESG standards. They have indicated that they lead by example and contribute to a wider industry transformation. But does a wider industry transformation mean that the standards of being greedy and harming people are okay? This is where things go wrong. We will understand this back again on the initial two occasions, 2004 and 2007 the year when a group of environmentalists debunked many of the illegal operations of Wilmar International. In 2004, when things were still growing for Wilmar, they were already undergoing scrutiny. 
First, it was due to published satellite photos that showed that their plantations had violated Indonesian law. But Wilmar International claimed that despite the lands being protected, they were still approved by the government. One cannot simply ignore the fact that Indonesia in 1997, the year it was approved, was undergoing political instability. Although we won't claim any relation between the possibility of corruption. But why was Wilmar International approved, despite it being barred by the very laws that aim to protect those lands? Secondly, the locals of the area had claimed that these very plantations of Wilmar International were endangering the Sumatran tiger. This then gave rise to conflict between Wilmar and the world. Why was the company still operating despite claims after claims by environmentalists, by local communities that they are endangering their environment? By 2007, they had reached a point where many local communities and environmental organizations have claimed that Wilmar had been illegally forested in Kalimantan, Indonesia. As a result of this action taken by the group, Wilmar had then immediately reformed its business operations, which can cite that they have accepted the motive that they did something wrong. But you might think it's just the average corporation out there that continues to do it for the name of profit. Well, many are doing that, but to the extent of how Wilmar International is doing it is awful. And this case in 2004 and 2007 is just the start. The largest case claimed was in 2015. In the initial months of that year, a number of disputes were raised. First, it was due to their actions in Uganda, Africa. Wilmar, along with its partners in Uganda, was undergoing a dispute over land in local communities. Farmers in Uganda claimed that they were evicted by oil palm plantations, which started in 2011. Initially, this oil palm project was promised to make employment and a brighter future for Uganda. However, that did not happen but the opposite. What happened was that the joint venture with a local corporation and Wilmar had created a hundred small-scale farmers and received little compensation if any at all. By 2015 after dialogues and cases, these farmers were still left with almost zero compensation for their loss and the authorities had not brought proper justice. But here's the thing, a number of those farm owners did not even sign to sell their own land to the company. As the case claimed, and when they were promised compensation for it, only a little amount had actually gone through. And when people thought that was the end of their atrocities, in 2015 it was in fact the start. In the later months, Wilmar and a group of companies were reported to be one of the causes of forest fires in Sumatra and Kalimantan. By 2016, Amnesty International alleged Wilmar International caused human rights abuses, citing forced labor, low pay and discrimination against women. They claimed to be using children between 8 to 14 years old, and some workers were extorted, threatened, or not even paid for their work. Two years later in 2018, the Greenpeace International report asserted that Wilmar International is the biggest and dirtiest palm oil trader on the planet. Yet despite all of these reports, degradation and complaints against Wilmar International, they continue to grow. They went on to open more factories, earn billions of dollars, make a profit here and there, and made their owners and founders amongst the richest people in the entire world. Furthermore, these as we mentioned are just one of the many more cases and stories out there. What is even more surprising is that Wilmar continuously tries to prove they have fixed their issues. They have joined environmental groups, applied monitoring in their policy to go against illegal means, and even joined the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. However, when placed an option between profit or the environment, they would always choose the former rather than the latter. In 2019, Gamma raised forests twice the size of Paris in Indonesia, which shocked the world. Wilmar International had broken ties to cancel their connection. However, despite broken ties, they still continued to buy Gamma Palm Oil. Its latest violation was reported to be in 2020. How can a corporation plagued with scandal after scandal and false promise after false promise still succeed? Well, as it consistently applies to almost everywhere around us, as long as it favors accounting profits, that's all that matters in the end. If it can make someone rich, employ someone and feed someone, it would gain grounds in winning in this world. But only when they can do this. When will the world finally hit a break due to climate change? Favoring short-term growth and profit may be the target of corporations, but it forgets about the future of this world. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Does Wilmar International even deserve to be a giant corporation, or should it face consequences for its action? Thanks for watching.